weren't in the borderlands. Um, and so now routinely um, every Saturday, we have people from across the USA, not only presenting from Washington or California, but also um, participating from San Francisco to Maine to Miami to um, all, well, you know, East Texas is further away than LA. Um, so we've had that exciting development in the Tumble Awards workshops. I guess pretty soon the Texas government's gonna force us out of our homes. <clears throat> and so we're going to, at some point soon begin, too soon for my taste, I guess, begin meeting in person again. But due to popular demand, Janet, uh, we're going to we're going to accommodate people from outside and continue a Zoom a Zoom experience while locally people are meeting in person. So uh, that's going to be cool. But Zoom really has helped. It's, uh, you know we used to be a binational project from the get go, and after the narco trafficante wars and then uh, 911 and all, it got harder and harder for the writers and artists from Juarez to collaborate with us, but that's been remedied by the Zoom as well. So that's been pretty cool the last year of having presenters from Mexico again, which we always used to do. And what we're about is the act, the practice of the acts of writing and reading aloud. If I say writing workshop and you think of something you've heard about or experienced in a creative writing program and in an MFA program, it's nothing like that at all. Uh, it's my understanding that in those programs, you know, you take your little brand new baby into the workshop and everybody competes on ripping it from arm to arm and leg to leg. And we're not about critique. Um, we're not even about finishing. We're about practicing writing and reading aloud. And so it's like improv, except we do it in writing. <clears throat> and I've been doing it for 25 years now. Robin's been coming for 25 years now. Kit's been coming since he was, I think, 11. Um, and it's been great that way. We've had people as young as seven and as old as 90 participate. We've had people who have been published in the Paris Review and people who, um, you know, like me, I, I've, I've read in New York City three times, in Boston twice, in LA twice, in Denver and Alaska and all across Texas and New Mexico. And also there are people there who are truck drivers and uh, little old ladies writing about their pussy cats in rhyme. And it's been notable watching all of these people get better and better as they keep coming back. Um, all of us get better through the simple acts of writing and reading aloud, as well as hearing really, really, really talented, gifted, renowned writers sitting across the table from you and writing and reading aloud. So um, that's my plug for Tumble Words. I'd, I'd love to see all of you there. Um, um, it's been most of you guys on this list have been, but Lee, you haven't. And so I'd like you, you came once. Okay, cool. You need to come back. And any of you who are interested in presenting a workshop, um, I've got a date open right now in uh, the, the first weekend in June, I think. Um, next week, next month is going to be incredible. Maria Perez, who's here, a very well-known activist for uh, disability rights, as well as a writer. And she's retired now and writing about genealogy for the El Paso, El Paso News.org. And her niece, who um, I'm sure I'm glad she's not here because I keep saying this, but it's true. The last time I saw her was when she co-presented with Maria several years ago, and she was just a little girl. And now she has an MFA from NYU and is working for the for the museum um, in in Mississippi. And they're going to be presenting the first weekend in May. Leslie Ullman, who won the Yale Younger Poets Prize, will be presenting. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Amparo, I can't think of his name right this second. Um, Robin knows it. Help me out, Robin, who just won an NEA grant and has won other. Aldo. Aldo. 
don't know. Yeah, we'll be presenting that month um, and other great writers. We've got coming up writers from Seattle, Washington, from Northern California and elsewhere. So y'all come as as we say here in El Paso. And with that, um, I will read two things. One is out of my last book. <laughs> Gris Munoz has been so mean to me lately about why haven't I got a new book out. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I really do need to do that, but um, before I do all that, I need to review about six books that I promised to review over a year ago. Anyway, I thought that uh, uh, many of you will find this familiar material, or as Jesus Guzman in Paz Descansa would say, refried beans. Um, but I thought I would share with you a little bit about who, who I am um, before I was who I am now. And this is out of The Tongue Has Its Secrets, which was published by Neil Poiesis Press out of Vancouver Island in uh, British Columbia. And this little poem is called Blue Norther. In the North Texas Panhandle, southbound truckers blast down Highway 83, headed to where the winds not from the north and not called blue. Winds and storm outside became, become Valkyries, the concrete septic tank, a magic stone. Women warriors ride like furies across the frozen plain. An Irish woman outruns a chariot, gives birth to twins, lays a curse. The wind takes my spirit in its arms and flees. Mama lights the candle, locks the door. <clears throat> I grew up in a place called Shamrock, Texas, and back then we celebrated St. Patrick's Day every year with little marching bands from New Mexico and Oklahoma and Texas. And uh, the governor of Texas came once and, or more than once, I guess. And so there is a connection in Shamrock, Texas to Ireland that's more metaphysical than real, but this is called Self-Revelation in Dos Lenguajes, and it's not been published other than just on Facebook. I slapped it on a comment um, on my profile photograph recently. Self-Revelation in Dos Lenguajes. I was born in the little hospital of Shamrock in the Texas Panhandle to a mother who gloried in the suffering and risk my birth caused her and to a father who was a damn Yankee but a hard worker and well-loved and respected by all. I barely knew his people back east in Pennsylvania. The few times I spoke to his kin, their language was odd and their accent nearly indecipherable. Ewan's not y'all, Polk not bag or sack. My father separated from his culture and settled in the panhandle after marrying a girl from Loco, Texas a place that no longer exists and never ev ever even had its two roads paved. The farmers and ranchers of Twitty, who dealt with my father at the cotton gin where he worked, quickly stripped him of his Yankee ways and accent. By the time I was born, he fit right in. Mama and Daddy took me from Shamrock General Hospital to the little stucco house with its pitched tin roof situated beside Highway 83 in the Twitty Flats. Right smack dab in the middle of what I frequently describe as cotton fields my daddy didn't own. Mama, whose nickname as a girl was Queenie, although just a Williams girl from Loco, hated Twitty. She hated the shotgun shack, hated the winds and the dust and the weeds and the red dog gravel yard. She could not bear to have me out of her sight or beyond her control, so she sat me in a chair with a book in my hands by the time I could sit up without assistance. Unlike the rest of the Williams clan, loud, rough, brutish, fun-loving denizens of the Dust Bowl, we Snyder girls were expected to excel in school and go on to college. My mother always told my sisters and me, anybody can get married if their standards are low enough. And uh, she was, she was as fear, she was a fierce and ceaseless guardian of my chastity. It was a hard road to hoe. She was determined I not get pregnant, 
get married, have kids, and settle down to a life in a place she found unfulfilling and uncouth. So I got my ticket out of there in the form of a National Merit Scholarship and thanks to LBJ's Great Society and headed for Cowtown to encounter college and the world. A local weed uprooted from Panhandle Caliche Clay, I became a waitress and college girl in flight from convention, religion, and conformity. Then I found my way to Austin to study law and sin, waiting tables at a blues bar, dancing at new wave clubs, forgetting my slip beneath a table in a punk bar called Raul's, honing my skills as an advocate. Soon enough, I became a migrant, moved from culture to culture, following education or work or travel. Fort Worth, Austin, Navajo Land, Turkey, Kathmandu, London, Santa Fe, Burke, City of the Crosses, El Chuco, Una Peregrina, Una Trabajadora Fronteriza, Sin Cultura, Sin Lengua, Sin Familia, Sin Raíces. Como mis clientes, los trabajadores agrícolas, I have followed my work from place to place and from cause to cause. I move from page to page of my life like a pilgrim seeking forgiveness for the original sin of my birth. I am a novel banned from schoolrooms because there is no hero and no God, part travelogue, part social history, punctuated by rowdy debauchery. The plot is pura drama with pornographic interludes. I am enchained by the sorrow I wear like a badge of honor and am a slave to my sexuality. I have had too much love and too much passion for any one soul to endure. A bitch goddess, a wild flower, heroic and degenerate. I am a rock and roller destroying myself with excess, selfless and self-indulgent, a force of nature, an unspent passion. I am more complicated than I look. Too high maintenance for anyone who isn't in mad love with me. I'm a bearer of water in a basket whose pitch no longer retains its function. Help me fill it. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, feel free. Wow. One thing we're going to get used to is you want to unmute and make some noise and give that praise, right, Mike? Yeah, that was wow. wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. That was perfect after Amazing. Uh, words this morning with the... Uh, Doing the prose point and <laughs> the so that was yeah yeah that was great. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you all saying that. Denise, thank you for the comment in the chat. Um, when I get compliments from people I know, I tend to think, oh, they're just being nice to me. <laughs> but if I don't know them, then uh, then I'm like, oh, maybe it's true. Uh, to study law and sin, yeah, uh, that was pretty much the way it was. Damn, yes, to Mama's words, yeah. <laughs> Anybody can get married if their standards are low enough. And I keep proving that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all uh, right. So, so now I know for the future, Donna, when we get back to doing our, our open mics, is I'm going to start tip, slipping dollar bills to people to like random strangers to compliment you after, after you read. <laughs> that's what I, I learned. <laughs> if that's what you have to do. Oh, <laughs> uh, right. Cool. Well, what a way to kick it off. Thank you, Donna. And, and uh, you know, many... Many of you are coming fresh from from a workshop today, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, so that was the whole the whole spiel. You heard it. Tumble words. Go check out the workshops. Lots of awesome authors, and we're gonna keep going for this show. Um, so, a quick correction: there was a, a little bit of a false start on the live stream software. We are live now, so I do want to thank people for tuning in on YouTube. Um, I I didn't my intro. I don't think my intro didn't make it. So uh, we do have some wonderful peeps here in the Zoom meeting, and you're gonna get to hear them tonight. Their words, their poetry, and of course, I want them to celebrate their their words. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with uh, one of our next performers, who has been a mainstay now. He's been going to the workshops, coming to the open mics, and it's just it's just been so cool to to experience his writing and his awesome artwork in the background. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and welcome to the stage Mike Sindler. Hello, that's right. You can't get rid of me. Um, and I'm just uh, front loading here, putting events and things in. And I'm just really quick going to mention the fact that uh, this love letters to Gaia, which at least a couple other people I think here are in as well. We're trying to get everybody to buy copies on Tuesday between 8.01 and 8.59 Eastern Standard Time so we can be an Amazon bestseller. 
So there's info for that and anything else in there that uh, anybody has any questions, just let me know in the chat and I'll get back to you on. Um, so this is National Poetry Month, so I thought I would just go ahead and do some poetry on poetry, seem to make sense. And being here in Denver, uh, I look out at the 14ers, which are what we call the mountains that are over 14,000 feet. And this is a different kind of 14ers. This is a sonnet. Setting out to scale literary peaks, studying the paths of predecessors, the dazzling range of tight styles and techniques mapped in treatises by wise professors, stratagem planned with great circumspection, with purpose fixed in mind and pen in hand, at the Volta a swift turn of direction, sprint towards the summit, all fates be damned. Poets have assailed these Alps for ages, both the Petrarchan and Shakespearean, some irresolute, some quite tenacious, struggled towards lofty criterion. Fourteener's crest, shall I walk upon it? Torturous attempt to write a sonnet. And I'm going to continue on with this sonnet thing. Uh, this one, uh, one of my best buddies just turned 457 yesterday. Um, still, still kicking it. Uh, good old Willie the Shake. And this one is called uh, Back to the Bard. It's often good to go back to the Bard to learn what true skill harness can achieve. True reflection cast in a mirror shard wherein nature's mysteries can be perceived. Fashion may run towards the avant-garde, ridiculing those who to old forms cleave, foolishly believing in this canard, yet still not so, all poets are so naive. Why toss from the deck such a useful card or keep it hidden, tucked in a sleeve? It's an unwise player who disregards an old but winning trick when it's received. The targets hit when the shaken spear was heaved, are still fair game when weapon is retrieved. And I'm going to do one that's, um, you know, in addition to all this poetry stuff, we just had Earth Day. So this one kind of combines the two. It's a pantoum, it's called Rainfall. Heavy sky, let's go, it's fuel of creation. Peering through glass to ponder passively, drops accelerate and multiply. Earth drinks from air, feeds its green children. Peering through glass to ponder passively, rooted in routine, typing, blossoming verbiage. Earth drinks from air, feeds its green children. Torrents of thought tap like rain against keyboard. Rooted in routine, typing, blossoming verbiage. What flowers from soil? What flowers from toil? Torrents of thought tap like rain against keyboard. Water finds its level. Words find their order. What flowers from soil? What flowers from toil? Petals burst with color. Pages brim with hope. Water finds its level. Words find their order. Heavy sky, let's go. It's fuel of creation. And I got a minute. That particular one was in that um, Love Letters to Gaia. And I'm just going to read another one that's also in that collection, which doesn't mean you don't have to buy it. You still have to buy it, damn it. Make us a bestseller. Um, this is a Garden Tonka. Inevitable beetles feast on rose blossoms. All beauty decays. Earth prepares for seasons change. Green leaves tinge red and yellow. Hollyhocks bending breaking under their own weight. Okay, thank you all very much.
Yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, make some noise. Clap it up. Make make some noise for Mike here, everyone. Mm. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah. Good to hear your voice, Mike. You have a good voice. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> awesome. And, of course, uh, he kind of went through the promo, kind of went right through it. He mentioned Lighthouse Riders. May 11th, she got that feature there uh time to arrive and of course love letters to gaia i put the link there on the youtube chat for you guys so that's pretty cool i'm glad to have you mike and hope to see you on monday as well the list it, it is available now by the way sign up sheet is available so if you guys want to get on that be a good time I'll, i can send the link but right now we're going to keep going with our reading today happy poetry month everyone uh you know i keep mentioning you know how we've been able to grow and you know uh, our next performer has been such a huge addition uh because they're here in El Paso and um, was re has recently been published in Chismosa Press and always introduces some awesome readings, uh, including their own. Let's go ahead and welcome to the stage Lee MS in the house. What is up, Lee? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. So I do have something new uh, and then two old stuff. So I'll start with the old stuff. This is called Arbol. Light skin, white skin, should I skin my skin and let the blood pull under my naked feet? Set it up for close inspection to determine my genes that I know nothing about? There's nothing to claim, reclaim, regain. Lost too long ago and erased, rename, retraced in hopes of finding answers, but found revision parts of the site I never knew, and romanticized parts of the plundering past, the branches that grew me passed on to me. So that leaves the question of who am I and where do I come from? Will I pass nothing to the canopy of generations who share the blood of unholy and revered ghosts? Will I understand this blood and tie down its magic to a land I have never stepped foot in, or instead feel naked feet burning with the touch of asphalt at the end, the longing to know who, what I am, and why? Where am I going under the glowing lights of this desert? And where has this blood been spilled? And I trace, stare in the mirror in hopes of finding a semblance of the names I never knew, the India Washishil, unnamed, the abuelita who was some sort of Indian erased, but now in the embrace of the little percentage of us that I know and how much of us I want to know. Whisper its meaningful, meaningfulness to the deaf ears of the trees that birthed us, faltering leaps, of, leaps on the canopy only capable of seeing their roots when they finally wither. The likes of me wandered of the rod climbing up our branches while the others carried by the wind let themselves go, but not anymore. Not one more name of me, of them, of us will be erased from the almanacs of our history. Call me historian, scholar, time traveler, carrier of half reels, half real, half imagined stories of who, what, where, and why. That's the first one. Uh, then I have something new, and it's this one. Uh, this is called I'm Still Here, uh, Somewhere Inside. I'm losing myself and myself. In myself, I'm losing myself. I'm following tracks left behind on the muck, circling through mazes and whirlwinds of haze, restricting the view of the paths I had made, the crumbs of breath I left behind to find my way back to the start of the trail. I'm losing myself in myself. In myself, I'm losing myself. I can't see the back of me, the, crook, the crooked bones of my spine, nor the trail of shallow breaths I leave behind. No longer omniscient of me, the whereabouts, whatabouts, whenabouts, whyabouts, or, or the end of this web. I'm losing myself in myself. In myself, I'm losing myself. Chasing after mirages of me, illusions of who I thought I could be had I found myself just in time. Before I lost myself to myself, myself I lost to myself. And then the last one, new-ish, uh, is called Ni de aquí ni de allá. I have it in English and Spanish. So first the Spanish version. Ni de aquí ni de allá. No cuestioné quién era, sino hasta cruzar líneas trazadas en mapas y a medio construir sobre el desierto. Espejismos posapocalípticos de murallas enterradas bajo la arena. Entrelazadas están las fallas geográficas creadas por el hombre y las intersecciones con las que disecciono este cuerpo frío. No crucé el río porque hubo suerte en abundancia. Quizás dones de mis antepasados ya cansados de que la parte colonizadora nos jodiera hasta el alma. Quizás la buena acción de toda una vida de un españolito arrepentido o cansado ya de arder en su fuego eterno inventado. Fui mujer por un tiempo, mexica, mexicana, chicana, mestiza, güerita, blanquita, pinche gringa, convertido en niño, escondido entre grasa, tejidos, nervios, venas y arterias. Chicano, chicanex, latine, latinex, niño blanco, looking mexican, nunca hombre. 
dividido en idiomas y naciones, imitando géneros, inventando seres multilingües o monstruos con lenguas bífidas. Desenmascarado en plena luz del día. Oh, you don't look white at all. La posible proximidad no se abunda para su orgullo. It's your nose, de chile morrón. Son los ojos negros. Tu piel no del tono correcto. Perhaps your English es muy bueno, pero tienes acento. Negado dos veces. Wait, seas mamona, si eres pinche gringa, pinche blanca, ciudadana privilegiada, ¿qué más quieres? Negada tres veces. Yo creo que toda mujer, mujer ha de odiar las normas de género en la que nos fuerzan. No, tiene, no tienes que huir de quién eres. La cuarta fue la última. Todo es verdad. Privilegiado, en el lugar correcto, al tiempo exacto para convertir las aguas en ancladero, resguardado. Y de vez en cuando, solitario. Perdido en encrucijadas, queriendo ser, pertenecer. Y empiezo otra vez. Soy mestice, latinex. Queer, mexicana, chicano, probando en desorden los disfraces de segunda mano que traje en la maleta, caja fuerte de la cual solo yo sé su contraseña. <laughs> Sorry, and then the last one, uh, it's just the tra translation of that one. It's neither here nor there. I only questioned who I was until I crossed shock lines on the map and an incomplete over the desert, post apocalyptic mirages of a city buried beneath the sand. The man-made geographic faults entwined by hand to the interse intersections with which I dissected this cold body. I never crossed the river because there was luck in abundance, perhaps gifts from my ancestors who had grown tired of the hurdles the colonizers made us jump through, perhaps a good deed of an entire lifetime of some remorseful Spaniard boy, or maybe tired of burning in his made-up eternal fire. I was woman for a time, Mexicana, Chicana, Mestiza, Guarita, Blanquita, Pinche Gringa. Turn into boy, hidden by layers of fat, tissue, nerves, veins, and arteries. Chicano, Chicanex, Latine, Latinex, Niño Blanco looking Mexican, never man. Divided between two languages and nations, imitating genders, creating multilingual beings, or perhaps monsters with forked tongues. Discovered in broad daylight. Oh, you don't look white at all. The, pros the possibility of proximity nauseating for their pride. It's your nose, bell pepper shaped. It's your black eyes. Your skin tone is not quite right. Perhaps your English is muy bueno, pero tienes acento. Denied twice. Wey, seas mamona. Si eres pinche gringa, pinche blanca, ciudadana privilegiada, ¿qué más quieres? Denied thrice. Well, every moment, woman detests this roles we are made to fit in. You don't have to shun what you were born to be, though. The fort was enough. It is all true. Privileged, on the right place at the exact time to turn the waters into an anchorage, sheltered, and sometimes alone, lost at crossroads, wanting to be, belong. And I start again. I am mestice, Latinx, queer, Mexicana, Chicano, trying in no particular order the handed down costumes I brought with me, a strong box of which only I know the, its password. And that's it. Yes, that was everything. Fabulous. Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, absolutely, Lee. Yeah, oh. I love it great piece um let's see yeah yeah all all the love absolutely so lee uh you have work as well that's been you know you got your book and i know you're always working on new stuff like you want to promote your stuff uh yeah i mean you can look up my book on amazon if you want a free copy i would only just charge you shipping i can just send it over to me or send me an email if you prefer pdf i do have pdf i'll include my email in there and the rest of my stuff you can find it oh there you go you can find me at cadaveres underscore literarios on instagram uh, or facebook lee martinez soto or if you want to look at all my links including the link to my book it's on my link tree and it's just slash cadaveres that's it perfect awesome yeah that's such a cool cool sheet and uh, i i'm gonna echo denise's uh sentiment there we'll pay extra for signed copies you know that would be that would be the <laughs> the way to do it for sure. Yeah, and if you can type that in the chat as well. Uh, thank you, Lee. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. And of course, you can catch Lee and Mike and a bunch of other of the performers uh, Monday nights at the open mics as well. Um, so, and of course, check out Tumble Words. Uh, you will you'll have see some of these faces as well, reading, performing, doing workshops. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and keep going. We're gonna stick around in El Paso. We're gonna go to the East El Paso where we have Bill Sparks who is so so instrumental in, in, in tumble words and it's always great to see him i know i know mondays are kind of late so it's great to have you today to share your work how are you doing today bill i am i am very well thank you i hope everybody else is well and surviving this uh 
You can't say the magic word, so I've abbreviated it, C-19. I hope you're all surviving C-19. I don't want those, uh, those monitors and sensors, uh, sensors to block me from social media because they do that. They'll, they'll tag you. They'll tag you immediately if you use the magic word. So C-19, hope you're all well. Uh, I am a Cold War warrior. I'm a retired Army warrant officer. Uh, I let everybody know that so people know what I can do. Um, you know, a warrant officer is the kind of guy that fixes everything. Um, and so usually I sit around having coffee with another veteran and we fix all the world's problems. I told the fellow the other day what we should do is record that and mail it off to the United Nations and let him get, let him take advantage of our knowledge here. So the first piece I'm going to read to you, um, I started going to a group called Warrior Writers almost like a piece of a therapy session, even though in my lifetime, I was never shot at one time in anger, not even by a jealous husband. So I'm a different kind of war, uh, soldier. So my challenge to write a piece of poetry every day in April for National Poetry Month, a month this was written on the 10th of uh, April in the Warrior Writer Workshop. The Cold War. The Cold War was not a real war, was it? The Cold War was not really cold. Ask the veterans of Korea and Vietnam. Ask the veterans of Panama and Granada. Ask the veterans of the Dominican Republic. Ask the Marines in Beirut. The Cold War was my war. The Cold War for me was German beer and schnitzel. The Cold War for me was ramen and soju. The Cold War for me was radar screens. The Cold War was supposed to prevent another war. The Cold War was waiting for the siren to sound. The Cold War was waiting, waiting, waiting. The Cold War for me was America's paradise, that's Key West, 40 feet off the ground on a radar tower. I can tell you some stories of the Cold War, how five soldiers around me died during the 20 years. I lived the Cold War. The Cold War was not really cold. The Cold War was not really a war, was it? Is that a, is that a Debbie Downer? I'm sorry. This one I wrote on the 5th of April, part of the National Poetry Month. A warm, sunny day. Today started off right. It was a warm, sunny day. The mountains were crisp against the sky. Later, the clouds started to fill the horizon. There were clouds of all types, high and low. Wispy clouds, puffy clouds, lazy clouds. I thought of you then and that silly game. We laid together in a meadow, searching the clouds for signs from above. We picked out the best ones and wondered. That one looked like a horse, or was it? Over there was a sailing ship with white sails. We played for hours on end until the clouds moved on. I remember those warm, sunny days with a smile. Today started off right. It was a warm, sunny day, and I thought of you. I like your Cold War one a lot, man. That was really good. Really good. Well, yeah, for people who were affiliated with the military um, during that time, that's, that's kind of poignant. This one here is about change. Change is hard, but change we must. The status quo is a myth. The only constant in the universe is change. Old people do not like change. Change is hard. Accepting change is harder. Change for the sake of change or change to make things better. <clears throat> change is hard. <clears throat> B is a formula. B is not a good outcome. A has to change for a better outcome. How do we change ourselves? How do we change the world? How do we make change happen? Change is hard. Old people do not like change. Young people face constant change. Technology changes all of us. The status quo is a myth. The only constant in our universe is change. We must all change. We must embrace ourselves. We must embrace change. Change is hard, but change we must. And then my last one here is a short piece. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, 
throw money, throw money. Uh, I fear the day. I fear the night. I fear every night. I fear every day. And yet I survive the night and I rise to face the day. My fear is my own. I fear my own failings. I fear my own shortcomings. I fear my own loneliness. We all fear something. I walk in fear. I face the fear. Wow. Yes. I don't remember well, reading that one, Bill. That's good. Uh, and Miss Donna Snyder, it is your fault. <laughs> I, I started out wanting to be a, a Hemingway type writer, a great American novel, marrying my high school sweetheart, teaching in a liberal arts college. And here I am 20 years in the army, 35 years in El Paso. And what am I doing? I'm writing poetry. <laughs> essays, Yay! contemporary essays. I wanted to do science fiction. And here I am now, oh, doing poetry. And it's all your fault, madam. <laughs> That's awesome. Love you, man. That, that was great. Uh, yeah. Do you have any any projects you want to promote? Like you mentioned the, the other writing workshop, the, the Warrior Writers. Uh, no, the Warrior Writers really is a kind of a therapy for some of the younger veterans. Uh, I, there are two Vietnam era veterans uh, that are there. One is a Vietnam veteran and myself, the era from that time period. Um, I participate sometimes in Sacramento Poetry Society um, and Idaho Writers Guild um, that's online, uh, but it doesn't fit right. So I have to, I'm still looking around. Tumble words for some reason, if the glove fits, you must. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Bill. Glad to, glad to have you on and always great to hear your work. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the last the last poem you read reminded me of uh, one time, and I want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Eddie Acosta, English teacher at Jefferson High School. He he does such a great job of community outreach and, and trying to get poets and writers into his classroom to speak with his students. And, you know, I much love to him for that. Uh, one of my favorite times, though, is when, when he actually got us to speak to a whole auditorium of juniors and i think some seniors but uh it was packed and you know i was with a nice group of of poets uh it was like slam poets that time it was like a bunch of us doing some of the poetry slam stuff but i remember uh when we were talking to the students one of the one of the little girls there was you know we were asking why do you write and you know this is her answer still sticks with me to this day and your, your poem kind of reminded me of that she you know she she was and she was a, a quiet shy girl she she kind of like had her hand up timidly and and i remember when i called on her she she just simply said well we we fear what we don't know so i write to know myself and that just kind of knocked me back and i knew like it's it's cool to see younger generations coming up with that stuff but it was nice to relive that through your poem as well bill so it, it just took me there uh, all right cool so thanks again guys for tuning in to this poetry month celebration reading that can be a mouthful right <laughs> with barbed wire open mic and tumble words project we are underway we have plenty of more performers there is still some room so if you guys are interested in signing up there is a sign up link on the youtube video all right, so as long as we have time and space, uh, come on by and come share some pieces. Until then, we're going to continue with our list, and I'm looking, oh, our next performer, I feel like almost needs, you know, I always let, I let her work do the talking, you know. I always, we always talk people up so much, but, you know, she's been published everywhere. She's been, you know, a long time contributor to Tumble Words, performing at BWAMS. We have Robin Schofield in the house. Robin, what is up? Good to have you here. Thanks, Richie. This is fun. Yeah, it's good to see everybody. <laughs> My son is here. That's good. I'm going to read a few short ones from my long, long book uh, called Drive, which has had an amazing journey to publication, and it may, uh, it may end up at a very nice publisher. So this is called Indeterminacy Principle. Our Chrysler blue shifts north from I-10 in the far west Texas part of Milky Way, where Big Ben jags 26,000 light years from the local core black hole 
and the frosted window double reflects my face in Castor and Pollux as they trisect my four eyes stretching from the Davis Mountains that dawn gauzes over when my spouse taps me on the knee and says, you're out there. Yes, I was looking at what we cannot make stop and be measured. So wow. that's yes, my yeah. family. That's what we do, take long car trips. <clears throat> and this one is called Jazz. These are all, I don't know why I picked them. They're all real early in the book though. Tuesday full moon, if I may confine one name of night, perihelion close to any one orbit, even this ellipse, if I may so call purple dayshine noon, stippling leaves and pools of stone till short shadows rise. If I may dissent from that calculus, the milestone moon do once more tonight, which was and yet was not the great horned owl in rapture, face relief, pray out by light, more dawn than day, Tuesday full moon. Yeah, these are all kind of kind of old poems. I don't have any new stuff to read, but um, this is when I used to leave things undone in the garden. Pruning. The roses I shear back a month late, pierced and thought, but too late. Left the shovel leaning for a year, turned the water on, the wheelbarrow still overturned. I did not write the moon too upset with me. Thank you. This is called, uh, this is in a, a form called a guzzle. It's called guzzle for a season or two. Brittle bark peels off the apple tree exiled in the light. Cordelia aptenia, pink and green, takes over, wild in the light. Tell me a story, the one about the hawks that flew to the sun, said my child in the light. As the crow flies lie river stones, announcing their sundial in the light. We wait for a fresh start, but January rain doesn't come while vultures wheel in the light. Flocks of robins go north while cottonwood seeds snow a field of absence coiled in the light. Oh yeah, that one got me. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah, that one got me. Okay. Yeah, that was really illustrative that that brought across a lot of power there. Yeah, it's partly the repetition and the internal, mm -hmm. the form is really cool if you follow yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Awesome work as always. I'm going to read one more just to round things off. It's very awesome. It's called Constructions. When the moon foretells a labyrinth by the square root of two pines per inch. The cat carries his fourfold forest on Roadrunner's third eye at rest. Beagle remainders the ranker hair, the toads subtracting till it rains. Radical sequence, the blades of light number in gold smoke, the flights of jade. Quadratic equations branch and leaf, awake in the chaos, still too brief. A time to sum what calendar phrase raven restores, what prayer wild rose. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, awesome. 
Awesome, Robin. Uh, would you like to promote anything? Any of your work? Well, I don't. Uh, I don't. Ha I have my book, uh, Flow. That won the Southwest. That was named Southwest Book of the Year. That's my most recent work, and you can get a copy from me, signed, and I'll just charge you uh, postage and envelope. <clears throat> you can also, I think, it's on Amazon, but uh, it costs more and it won't be signed. So don't buy it from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> just in general don't <laughs> awesome yeah. cool awesome great great to know that and uh, as always thank you robin uh as mentioned it is a family affair so we will be hearing from kit pretty soon um and i, I like what what donna said I, I have to remember that in the future when introducing robin the poet laureate of tumble words heck yes uh resident educator on the sciences and maths yeah that last poem was just blew me away um, I, I loved it. Um, okay, I've cool. More, I've learned more physics and, and maths from Robin than I have from my own personal reading. <laughs> that's 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 great. Yeah, and he started and he, and he started doing that too when introducing classes now in session. It's a fun way to introduce. Um, okay, so we're gonna keep going just so we can get some smoothness to this. We're gonna go ahead and go from El Paso. Last three performers are from El Paso, but again, online new friends all over the place we're gonna go to the east coast and we're gonna go to maine where you can we're gonna check in with generalissimo he's got a couple pieces for us in celebration of poetry month what is up generalissimo generalissimo welcome back okay yeah he hello is. i'm right here bear with hey. me yeah well i think we're having a good month we're doing a lot of 30 30 stuff and uh let's we'll see what i have for you today Bear with me, Ugh, gotta get to the top of the page. I'll start with a haiku. A haiku that rhymes, sounds, so, sounds quite so very sublime, it should be a crime. And then a limerick, because why not? Um, there once was a dog with no teeth who couldn't enjoy bones or chew meat. He went on an adventure, stole his owner's spare dentures, snatched a defrosting steak off the counter, and tore it up like a happy thief. Um, redef a redefining of what a disease isn't. In the midst of a pandemic, a not-so-new epidemic has reared its ugly hydra head. But how can mass shootings be considered epidemics? Don't epidemics have has to be caused by organic contagion. Is there a new official category of diseases that aren't diseases? It's doubtful any of the perpetrators ever met each other or crossed paths. It's doubtful their potential or actual mental diagnoses were all the same. It's doubtful their mothers went to the same fertility doctor who subbed his sperm for donor sperm. This is not the same as when all those teenagers had to be hospitalized from vaping. There is nothing these people breathed in that disrupted their respiratory systems. There can be no excuse for such an event. Planning must happen. Authorities look for motive, but motive isn't always discovered or doesn't necessarily make sense. They will be psychoanalyzed in the press. They will be a new cycle event that will fade into oblivion when the next story happens. They will be a proverbial drop in a gun violence bucket. Calling mass shootings an epidemic or social disease seems a bit off the mark. Maybe how we, how we react to these events is the disease that isn't a disease that causes more unconnected, disaffected people to contract this disease that isn't a disease. Um, the next piece is called either to wrap or not to wrap or wrapped around your attitude. You can put, the, put a, which one you like best if, in the, if you wanna do that in the uh, chat. Hope, are you a perennial flower propagated from seed blown an unknown distance by wind and lodged into soil, germinating from wet of rain and warmth of sun, sprouting from ground into existence, climbing into atmosphere to breathe sweet oxygen, maybe a few inches tall, maybe several feet. Maybe you will climb a trellis or wrap yourself around an ancient tree. Leaves will sprout from your stalk. Buds will appear, flowers will happen. They might produce nectar to feed honeybees and hummingbirds. They might open wide and grow berries or eggplants or tomatoes. 
They might produce perfume aroma. They might be picked or pruned for the purpose of romance. You might wilt after flowers and fruit happen to produce seed to be spread by wind or simply dropped. Your roots may lie dormant in winter for you to spring forward each next spring more resilient than before. And this is called Worth Its Weight in Porcelain. The antique French porcelain bowl sat on the mantel of the stone fireplace. A small daylight LED track light aimed at it gave it an ethereal glow. It was thin and delicate, not quite translucent, but the small tulips that were stamped into it allowed light to travel through. It looked as if you squeezed it with your thumb and forefinger, it might break. It was a housewarming gift from Zach and Zelda for Zach's brother and his wife, Max and Martina. On its bottom was etched PLK 1903. The house was built in 1903. On the third Sunday of every month, Max and Martina hosted Zach and Zelda for supper. Martina often found a way to belittle Max. She would apologize for things her husband said that weren't wrong or offensive and talk to him in a demeaning, fake, monotone voice. Zach considered these behaviors as tactics intent to diminish Max's self-esteem. Zach stood up and called Martina out on her emotionally abusive behavior. Martina walked over to the mantel and knocked the bowl off, off it with her left index finger onto the flagstone tiles in front of the fireplace. It broke into five shards of antique porcelain. Max walked into the kitchen, then re-entered the room with a small Tupperware container, picked up the broken bowl pieces and placed the container on the mantel. Max slept in the guest room. He and Martina avoided each other the morning after before leaving for work. When Martina got home, she saw the bowl had been repaired, its cracks filled with melted gold. She thought how romantic a gesture this was and how lucky she was to have such a thoughtful husband. She walked into the kitchen to find Max sitting at the table, his left hand minus a wedding ring, setting atop a not so thin manila envelope. Gracias, everyone. Yeah, awesome. What was the what were the choices on the second one again? Oh, I think it was uh, rap or not to rap, W R A P, or wrapped around your attitude. Ah, okay. Nice, nice. I, I hmm. Probably I, I'd go with the second one, but I'm curious what other people think as well. I think Donna said the second one as well. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, where can people find you online? You know, you know the spiel. Yes, uh, Brian Ira Franco on Facebook, G N R L S M O. Um, on Instagram, I'm going to put that in there. Plus, I am also in the uh, Love Letters to Gaia that um michael was talking about i'm in in a in another anthology and that came out from australia called globalization i'll put the information on how to get those if you want to um i have a few other things that i'm going to be in that will be coming out within the next several months so you know i've been been working hard trying getting getting acceptances and rejections because you can't do it without getting a few no's <laughs> And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone, especially Donna, for 25 years of excellent service and providing us with just a workshop of incomparable value. That's great, Ryan. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate those good words. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> 25 years. We uh, earlier, in, you know, that was one of the, our first online events through Tumble Words. And so it was, it was nice to get together. And like I mentioned, it's nice to see Brian attending the workshops, Michael, um, Finn, I've seen at the workshops. So it's super great. Um, and, and the 30 by 30 is super interesting. Yeah. Um, a lot of Facebook groups going on. Uh, Brian, if you have him on, on Facebook, you know, often shares, many many of those links and groups and events and that's that's also a treasure so i appreciate that as well for being able to connect all these different networks and communities together <clears throat> so just wanted to say that as well um okay cool that was generalissimo from maine we're gonna go ahead and move on to omaha nebraska 
And our, our next performer, I, I do not know her. So I'm going to read this, this nice little bio that she sent me. So Janet makes her living as a court interpreter. She is a uh, community activist for social and environmental justice. Her works have been published in local Nebraska journals and has performed at local events. She has burst her cocoon and is unfurling her wings as a writer and poet. So we will celebrate that today in this event. Let's go ahead and welcome to the stage, Janet Eleanor Bonet. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. And I want to give kudos first to Tumble Words because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be reading tonight. It, um, it's an a act of bravery on my part to put myself out there. I'm just beginning to um, cross that threshold. So thank you for the opportunity. And you too, Ricky, it's awesome. Um, I hope I do justice to your show. This one is called Interpreting Silence. They say she shook her baby to death. She denied it before God and American justice. I believed her. The system did not. She trusted in God. She believed in blind lady justice. But God finds no place in the courts and justice is not always a lady. Misguided in innocence is painful to watch. The trial lasted a week. Deliberation just long enough to get the jury one more free lunch. God, as predicted, is absent. Justice is out walking the streets. Who am I in this morality play? The interpreter, nothing more. Now the accused stands silent, and I stand beside her, whispering English into Spanish. The foreperson, a pillar of the community, grips the verdict card waiting for the judge to ask the question. The monochrome jury watches her, not him. She hears my voice pronounce judgment. That hurts. Guilty is charged, your honor. The guaranteed presumption of innocence, her only cloak of hope is stripped away. She is unashamed, only disappointed. The judge drones pages of judicial jargon it all means nothing to the woman beside me. Finally, purgatory ends. Shall we proceed to the sentencing? Her attorney, slumped in his seat, forgets to stand. Yes, your honor, my client is ready. In my heart, I reject what he says. The innocent are never ready to be condemned. Very well, Maria Lara Guzman Castro, you have been found guilty beyond reasonable doubt by a jury of your peers. He pauses, perhaps at the absolute absurdity of that cliche. In Spanish, it translates to a jury of equals. That irony infuriates me. But he's only the judge, not the jury. He presides, but does not decide. Her attorney's tears splatter on the defense table. Salty stains on old varnish he can't wipe away. The deputies avert their eyes. His breach of unexpected, his unexpected breach of demeanor embarrasses them. The whole town knows him. He's a good man, but a grim failure today. No one is speaking, not even the curious public. Like thrill seekers at a horror show, they want drama to talk about at bingo. Will she scream or will she faint? She knows they're waiting for her to break. They see her as unworthy, not of their kind. Her pastor is mumbling prayers. Her sister is not praying at all. The stenographer cannot type mumbles, silence, or the sound of tears on wood. So there is no tack, tack, tack on his keyboard. He instead finds an imagined spot across the room and stares. People's faces are too distracting, too disturbing. Those people refuse to hear her silence for what it is, her condemnation of them. Unsatisfied, they stir as if to leave. And in that instant, she fills her lungs. I prepare, I must not betray her trust. 
I am her voice to these strangers. I scream a silent prayer. God, help me hold my tears and do her this justice. Her silence must be mirrored in my delivery. Her eloquence must be equaled in my choice of words. No longer contorted by the ordeal, her face is beautiful. Her awesome strength of will radiates from her. Her words carry great power and they burn into me like a pulse from a nuclear blast. I sway from the impact. Finally, she speaks. After profound silence, any sound has power. But I absorb her words to comprehend their fullest meaning. I prepare to imbue my rendition with her eloquence. In that process, I become a version of her. I am almost her, but with words of a different language, a language that is not hers. I am innocent as the spirit of my baby girl. Someone caused Raina to die, but it was not me. I am her mother. Her use of the present tense blows my mind. I am her mother, she declares in defiance of the verdict, leaving not a shadow of doubt. Rejecting that death could end motherhood, exposing the 12 judgmental strangers who saw her skin before they listened to her truth. I'm just the interpreter. Interpreter, Empathy must be suppressed. I must not betray her trust. I am not the one who has permission to show emotion. I am her voice to these strangers who must hear her. Again, I scream that silent prayer. God hold my tears and help me do her this small justice. I am a mother interpreting for a mother, but motherhood is not our bond. Our bond is the rhythm of those alternating silences. She does not look at me and gives me no cue to interpret. She trusts me to break my silence only when she becomes silent. I know to listen for it. That certain quality of silence is an interpreter's cue to speak. Only her meaning in her words, that is what will be heard. I swore an oath to carry her message as she intends it. I communicate the underlying righteousness, the power of the present tense of that simple affirmation. I am her mother. The whole of her meaning is captured. The whole of her meaning is rendered to its intended effect. The silence in the courtroom is absolute. Maria knows by that absolute silence that I spoke in English exactly as she had spoken in Spanish. Her tears flow freely down her stone still face. The deputies come for her in silence. In silence, she returns to look into my gringa blue eyes. We bridge a deep divide between each other's being and culture and knowing and experience. Mothers, soul to soul, acknowledging, respecting, understanding. I had done my job well. In that, I did do her a kind of justice. But this day will haunt me forever. I saw her innocence and kept silent. Wow. 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 That was, that was power, powerful. The silence, interpreting silences. Janet. Wow. You guys give her a round of applause for that. Um, I thank you for your work. And that, that piece is, is heavy. Yeah. It was heavy to write. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So many, I need to go back and listen to some of those, some of those, those, uh, phrases you i mean well done well done thank you very much i appreciate it thank you folks thank <clears> you is there wonderful yeah and interpreting is not just a skill it's also a talent and can make all the difference in court 
Um, I've had to depend on Spanish language interpreters my entire career, except for when I was depending on Navajo interpreters. And um, I'm very grateful to you for the work you do and for the heart that you show. Thank you. That, that means a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you have, I know you said you're just uh, starting your writing journey, but do you, do you uh, attend Tome Awards often? Do you, do you have a, anywhere you share your writing or anything just yet? Um, I haven't got a, a Facebook page or a website yet. I haven't been that brave. I'm pulling together some of the poems that I've done over the, the last five years, polishing them, and I'm going to create a chapbook that I hope to self-publish shortly. Um, and, but I do want to promote one thing I want to promote is both the fine lines literary journal, which accepts from anyone who wants to submit poetry, prose, nonfiction essays, um, short stories, short, short stories for their journal. Um, and it's, you can look them up. It's fine lines, literary journal. Um, and if you need the contact information, I'm, I'll put it in the chat in a minute. Um, and then um, the Nebraska Writers Guild has now started doing a lot more activity. It's a statewide journal, whereas Fine Lines is um, mostly Omaha based, though we have contributors from all over the world. Um, and I'm one of the um, assistant editors for that. But Nebraska Writers Guild has started doing different kinds of contests. Um, some have monetary remuneration, others don't but um, they create publications out of them then, both electronic and then in print that you can order. Um, so I encourage you to go to the Nebraska Writers Guild website and check them out. Um, the quality of the writing is awesome. And um, sometimes people are, are reticent to submit to small journals like that or um, very local state journals, but um, the more we share our work, the more we can change the world. So reach out to um, Fine Lines and to the Nebraska Writers Guild. And um, I'll keep reaching out to great groups like Tumble Words. Thank you. Excellent. Well said. Yes. And and yeah, your piece was important in, in definitely in that sense of, um, yeah, yeah. Like Lee, Lee said here too, um, you're carrying her voice upward, you know, um, it's, 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 it's breaking that silence, you know, so um yeah thank you and also uh i look forward to that future chat book that's gonna be really cool and now you're immortalized on our youtube channel you know barbara open mic and you, you can go back and, and and we can reference this many times uh this will be archived you can, you can go back and, and watch all of the performances um and and that's something that we've been doing now and i think that has been really been really helpful it's i guess it, it counts as like a a type of publication you know an online performance and so <clears throat> someone who's been really helpful like we have a whole year years worth of online open mics that we've been doing and and you know someone that's really helped out a lot in that process is our next performer that's my segue it's, it's my <laughs> cheap way to seg segue but <clears throat> can i um, say one quick yes, thing yes before you segue completely is the poem that i read um it's nobody's ever read it except uh, miguel escobar gave me a critique on it but um this is the first time it was performed this is uh it's third draft only so um when putting it out there and getting the the feedback that i'm getting from you folks is is going to really help me make it the best it can be so that i can uh share it more with the world so i want to say thank you for that all right yeah thank you sweet 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 um okay janet in the house yes nebraska all right we're gonna go ahead and and uh get back we have a couple el paso performers some more and then we'll again we'll, we'll kind of bounce around but next up uh you already heard from robin you know and i mentioned that this is a family affair uh and i think it always comes up that he's been attending since he was 11. no wonder that's the secret right uh <laughs> effectually known as mr monday night uh, and that's only because we do them on monday nights right now it's mr saturday night let's go and make some noise for kit wren on the stage kit what is up man hey go kit <laughs> all right thank you richie yes i've been going to tumble work since i was 11 or 12 when it was in the chamizal 
And after a long hiatus, because I was a teenager and too cool for this, and then I was in college and in somewhere else, came back. And Tumbleworks is like essential to my quote unquote process at this point. Uh, a gen the hardest part of writing is beginning. And, you know, Tumbleworks forces you to just put the blank page in the submission hold until it taps out and you have something. And what you do with that something is up to you, but, but I'm going to read um, three things, time permitting, um, that all started in tumble words. And I will try to, yeah, I remember all of these. Yeah, I will tell you about the, the workshop each time because um, the first one, eh, in a little bit of a back padding, I managed to write this during uh, tumble words I was giving. I presented one on Jack Gilbert towards the beginning of our whole um, digital era. And after giving them a Jack Gilbert poem as an example, I told everyone to imagine a reuniting with someone, but something's a little off. And I worked with my own prompt and got this, which is one of my favorite things I've written. It's called The Reformation. <sighs> The comedians have renounced raunch and transphobia and hatred in general. They have seen their folly, they tell me. They credit me for their Damascene moment. They line up and say sorry and thank you as if it is all one word, a chant for newly shaved Hare Krishnas. They have set up this event, the first of its kind post pandemic to prove their sincerity to me. One approaches the mic, and then another. They are all reading aloud from the same worn copy of Capitalism and Schizophrenia by Giles Delois. They pass the one copy between themselves as they all take their turn, going for exactly seven minutes each. It has a used tag from a college bookstore, University of Vermont. I can just barely see Charlie the Catamount smile from the crinkled sticker on the spine. Their faces as they perform are intense and as the others sit and watch, they are wrapped. One is taking notes. My companion and I retreat to the patio and by his leave, I smoke my first cigarette in two years. One by one, the comedians follow me out, eager and pleading like seminary students. Is this better? Are we better, Kit? Have we made up for our sins and our wayward lives? The truth is, I don't know. The truth is, I thought I would always have to fight the comedians for saying one awful thing or another. I viewed it as a responsibility I had to the scene. And the truth is, I have a middle management bred paranoia about what it means when a responsibility gets taken away. The truth is, I like to fight against the comedians so much that I didn't give a thought to what victory would look like. The truth is, I confess to the one with the notebook, I haven't read very much theory. And uh, this one I wrote either at the beginning of this month or the tail end of last month uh, when uh, a dear friend, Leslie Becker, uh, hosted Tumble Words and played the cello for everyone uh, with a brief um, history of Bach and a brief history of the cello concertos in particular. And uh, something interested me about the idea of people re-recording the Bach concertos over and over again as they get older, without necessarily disavowing the earlier ones, but just doing a new one. And I wish I could do that, because as a constant tinkerer, I'm always deleting everything and starting over. So that's what this is about. This is me being jealous of musicians in general. Musical perfectionism tends to result in more recordings. Writerly perfectionism Ends in fire. Kafka and Dickinson 
we're exacting and explicit. Burn everything. It pays to misunderstand. It pays to be comfortable with being misunderstood. Better poets than I have revised things to death. Walt Whitman kept mowing leaves of grass until it looked like all the other lawns. W.H. Auden changed or to and, and another light went out over Europe. Perfectionism, it's two syllables too long. I would like the expansive musical approach that creates sibling recordings. What I have instead is the neurotic writerly standards that abort. They pull dishes out of cold ovens, pour the coffee through a colander into the sink, sell the crib and the baby to two different buyers. If I could just remember what this was all supposed to be, if I could remember why I started writing, then I could just do it. And then I could stop. Awesome. I love that one. Very good. Very awesome. good, my man. Awesome. Thank you. And this one is uh, fresh out fresh out the oven. This afternoon, we had a pretty interesting uh, session to do with prose poems, which is already kind of my bag. It's hard to tell when you just hear it, but yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, so... This is one after, after a light dusting and glazing. This is what I have so far. Let's see how you like it. The temporal committee has responded to my letter dated April 13th, 2016. They apologize for the delay with just enough self-awareness to make me wonder why there isn't more self-awareness. They write to inform me that my request to forfeit all memories from the year 2007 has been denied. They tell me all requests of this nature are considered fully and carefully, but are typically reserved for the survivors of natural disasters and war atrocities. While they express a patronizing sorrow over the feelings of loneliness and alienation mentioned in my correspondence, they note that such feelings are abundantly typical in 19-year-olds. They further note that such a process would be absolute, taking away not only the bad feelings, but the lessons of the bad feelings and the incidental joys. Their records show that I would be losing five crucial friendships, two terrible friendships that were useful warnings, a Sonic Youth concert, and that one baseball game, which was dis disrupted by a swarm of midges. Wouldn't I like to keep remembering watching that on a 12-inch television? They inform me of my rights to an appeal and have enclosed the appropriate forms. I am reflexively filling it in when I stop and reflect. I don't remember why five years ago I was dwelling in such a despondent way on an additional nine years prior. The problem of memory seems to have fixed itself. I wonder why we all approved of the Temporal Committee and Memory Bureau without much political pushback. There was a rally or two. I went, I marched, mostly to get out of the house, a little bit just to be seen. The opposition was focused on its Orwellian potential, but the reality is less exciting and worse. They are unhelpful, opaque, combatively self-righteous. Let me speak to you plainly. I don't need this shit. <laughs> I can forget things on my own. Yeah, man. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Awesome okay. killer lines, man. <laughs> So there are so many of those sound bites. My kids love to go with sound bites from the movies. If they listen to your poetry, <laughs> they read your poetry, they're going to have a million more to sit and talk about and laugh over and remember. But just great, great lines in there, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very, Thanks very uh, clever, funny, hard hitting all around. You know, I, we, we envision the day where, you you get your steel cage match 
barbed wire <laughs> ropes with the comedians. <laughs> It's always funny. <clears throat> um, yeah, they're they're all around, you know, waiting patiently. Uh, okay, so Kit, uh, promote your stuff, man, uh, for people who are here for the first time and seeing you for the first time. Okay, well, for those of you seeing me for the first time, hi, how are you? You doing good? You look well. You've been running. Uh, I uh, I'm here every Monday night as part of the Barbed Wire Open Mic series, and they're uh, digital open mic. We're pioneers in the space. Uh, me personally. Twitter at uh, Twitter at Kit Talk Sports. That's as the name suggests. Uh, Instagram at Kit Run Away. Uh, this is a, a a pretty esoteric and artsy fartsy blog about football. It's a weird Venn diagram, but I might be the only person in the middle of it. But check it out, see what you like, and you can always find me on Facebook. And if you want to drop something in the tip jar, my PayPal is connected to my email. And if you have any other kind of opportunity, that's my email. Okay, uh, thanks everybody for the uh, patience and encouragement and applause and so on and so forth. I'm going to move right now. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, Kit. Yeah, the email's connected to the PayPal. PayPal's connected to my wallet. Um, <clears throat> hell yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so we're gonna go. I'm just going looking. I'm looking at the list right now. Uh, I'm looking at it's Lucia Malia Catal. Is that Lucia who is here, Martinez? Yes, yes, Lucia, Lucia Martinez, but la Malia Cat. Malia Cat good, yes. good to see you. Hi, welcome. Good to see you. Hey, yeah, this is my first time being, uh, but I've been coming and going uh, to Tumbleworks, I don't know, probably since the 90s. Uh, and uh, this year, I've been coming much more regularly since the pandemic. And I've been writing haikus and basically using the metaphor of the cocoon uh, because it's, it's very surreal. I mean, everything was put off and um, also dealing with death as a potential horror story, as a reality. But that's what I actually see in it like kind of like a twin. That's how I'm dealing it, especially in my artwork, uh, in my graphic artwork. Uh, but as well as in the uh, poetry. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a poem that, uh, well, a work that I just came out from uh, this uh, Tumble Works um, from the pose, uh, yeah, prose poetry. And then I'm going to read two old poems. So this is just fresh off the ovens, ovens okay. Let me put it this way. The page is in the moment of scribbles, trying to dissolve the patterns of A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, the heartbeat of a song, and weaving back what the artist sees. The page is the moment of finding a body of patterns and chaos, unspoken stories and new beginnings. Madre Coraje, an old lady Donita, defending her barrio through courage against greed and gentrification. The old lady weaves trees to children and generations to be while commanding historians, artists, activists, the community to seek justice and beauty. El Esqueleto Rumbero, the death of a star is my skeleton. Since lockdown, I use the cocoon as a metaphor. Safety, my home, incubation, but the caterpillar it set, threads itself into becoming the living meal as the butterfly arises from the caterpillar's juices. Like Christ who resurrected from his soup, who knows, quien sabe? but my dad did not emerge as the butterfly. They tell me to accept that he's now in a better place resting. P.S. I return your metaphor, dear caterpillar, my sibling. And when it's my time, I hope the butterfly arises with my wings. 
So now I will read, uh, yeah, uh, an old poem that uh, it, that is published by Mujeres de Maiz, and I and yeah, I did it. I created it in uh, a long time ago um, from a workshop that Nancy Green uh, did for Tumbleworks. Olmeca, I see the Olmec face, and I see my sister's face walking downtown. She walks towards me, all dressed in black, and comments, I thought you were black, but you're just a Mexican. Hey, come back. Don't walk away. How am I to interpret your comment when Mexican children would tease me for being black and my abuela denying that we're Indians, much in the least Africans? Cuando su cara es Olmeca. Dime, abuela, and I see my sister walking away. Okay, and this is a much older poem that came into my feed, but I uh, sometimes I just, I go back to it. The calling. At the tone, please leave a message. We are but rootless shadows of God. We wander and chase for pleasures along this wasteland when our happiness awaits in Dante's garden. When will I wear blood and roses. In yearning, I die to awaken in my savior's sword. Maria, pero Maria, no entiendo tu, er tu orgasmo muerto. Shall I call 911, Maria? Ningún cura me borrará el llanto y los besos de mi madre. A quien, a quien, Su vientre ha sido apuñalado con muros y tristes crucifijos. María, pero María, the Maguey once sang to me. As I walked to the mirror, I saw her as if for the first time, who dances with me, but a woman who I will never kiss. María, pero María, come dance with me instead of dancing alone in the night room of your soul. Thank you. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Uh, wow. So cool. Miss Lucia. Lucia. Yes. May I have your email address? Uh, sure. Would you put it on the chat if you don't mind? Yes. yes Thank I'll put you, it on the chat. I have something to share to you. Uh, okay. To share with you about the Olmecas. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. Amazing. I can't wait to hear. Yeah. And actually, uh, Maria, you're next. But I, I just really, really briefly wanted to give a shout out to Nancy Green. She uh, she's one of my she was one of my inspirations, I guess, coming up in my in my early 20s as a performer, uh, as a musician and, and a spoken word writer. So, you know, I, I can't you know, I'm appreciative so much of of her role in that, you know, and, and always her always being inviting you know, when she would perform like at UTEP and she'd bring her drums mm -hmm. and invite people to join her in, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's magic, you know, and, and it always taught me, you know, don't to, to kind of open up to people and let people in. And uh, <clears throat> so she's one of my big inspirations as far as that goes. And also uh, as far as, you know, you mentioned Tonita and Duranguito and, and uh, I think we're going to be involved with an event, an artist collective event in, in May. Yes. So we can raise yes. funds. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's awesome. uh, it's coming this. Uh, I think it's the second of May. Yes. Yes. First first week mm -hmm. of May, and and it's going to be on us on a Sunday. I think yeah. it was decided. Yeah, it's going to be Sunday. Yes. Awesome. So we'll be posting about that too on on BWAM's stuff because barbed wire is, is behind the cause too for for that, um, and protecting our our neighborhoods and communities. Uh, so just thank you, Lucia, and uh, you You're know, speaking, welcome. yeah. Speaking of that, next up uh, is a founding member of the Tornillo Collective, which is also an amazing project. Art, artist, writer, advocate. It is an honor to have you here, Maria. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to do two poems. <clears throat> The first one, I wrote it last year as the pandemic was 
all this pandemic and social unrest was beginning or coming to a head, I guess. Uh, and the second one, I wrote it for a play that, um, that the Tornillo Collective is uh, putting together that the Tornillo Collective wrote. And again, the Tornillo Collective is, uh, was started off by Miss Nancy Green, uh, who invited uh, me and then invited, and also invited um, um, Miss um, Raquel Mejia, Valerie Muruato, Tony, uh, Tony Fuentes, and um, me. Donna Schneider, yes, Donna. I was going to get to you, Donna. And um, and so there's six of us that were the, the writers and many, many supporters. Uh, many people gave us their input. Uh, so let me start with the, with the first one. Uh, parasites. My words are parasites looking for hosts to live upon, looking to flourish, to live through la corona, to live through like corona. My words are conceived by soul. My words live on paper fed by ink. Like corona on the perfect host, my words will thrive. All opportunistic coronas thrive as they destroy their hosts. The fearful parasites oppress, steal, disarm, disempower the people. Wear a mask for your own good and for the good of others. Muffled breath, stifled voice, control. All coronas are parasites feeding off the multitudes like my words. All coronas fear the loss of control the loss of their host. Yet soul breeds love and voice liberates. Words spark thought and liberating acts. Be observant, yet think, speak, write, fear not. Okay. And uh, the second one is um, <clears throat> it's in English, uh, it's in Spanish and in English, so I can um, read both of them. <clears throat> Yo les hice caso. Me pidieron mis abuelos que me portara bien para que me ayudaran, para que no se enojaran conmigo y me castigaran. Yo les hice acaso a todos porque me dijeron que me portara bien. Yo le hice caso a la señora porque tenía mucho miedo y ella me abrazaba. Yo le hice caso al señor porque tenía mucho frío y hambre y él me dijo en dónde estaba el pan. Yo le hice caso al guardia porque me prestó el teléfono a escondidas para hablar con mi tío. Yo le hice caso al doctor porque me sentía muy mal. Otros no hicieron caso y los castigaron. <clears throat> I listened to them. My grandparents told me to behave well so they would help, so they wouldn't get mad at me and punish me. I listened to everyone because they told me to be good. I listened to the lady because I was so scared and she hugged me. I listened to the old man because I was so cold and hungry and he told me where the bread was. I listened to the guard because he secretly let me use the phone to call my uncle. I listened to the doctor because I felt very ill. Others didn't listen and they were punished. I, I I love listening to the readings, but I would so love to have a visual copy of it, you know, a hard copy or, or on screen so that I could really absorb it. Um, the work is, 
of everybody's work is so good, but things like this, you really need to see it so you can soak it in, I think. When when I only hear it once, I'm like, oh man, there's something there that I'm I need to I need to pull out of it. You know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I better reading it along with the person reading as well. That was great, Maria. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Maria. It, um, the second poem um, was inspired when we found out that there was a huge incidence of child abuse um, with the sexual predators within the, the detention programs. And um, and it's 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 utterly shameful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what a uh, shameful is the right word. To, what a terrible thing that, that's been happening. Um, so it kind of gave me an idea for for an event where you know it'd be like, well, no, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna. Hold off on that, and and we got something there. But uh, thank you for sharing sharing those, and uh, they actually are um, on again. Since this is being live streamed on YouTube, you can actually go back, and the video will still be there, so you can actually replay readings over and over again. So I know it's not the same thing as reading it, but uh, you know, uh, it, it you can experience the the reading and uh, replay it over and over. So that that's good. Um, so. Oh man, we're just gonna keep going into it. Uh, we're going from Maria to Denise. Denise is here, and it's just really been like taking taking off, you know. And it's it's really cool to see what what she's been doing. She's got some work coming out to be published. I uh, I'm ready to read your manuscript, and uh, she's gonna be reading uh, on Friday the thirtieth. Uh, but I'll let you talk about that. But you know, much love, Denise in the house. What is up? Thank you so much, Richie. I am so glad that I get to follow you, Maria, because uh, the poems that I'm going to read today are the same thing. Um, I, I also keep an eye out for what's happening at the border, and it's it's very near and dear to me. So um, I wrote this one. It's called, uh, well, I'll tell you right now what it's called. I wrote this one in response to when we found out that there was some women that were getting um, getting operated on to take out their, their, their womb in order for them not to get pregnant. And a lot of the women who, uh, and this was in the detention camps, and a lot of the women who um, were saying that they were being assaulted, a lot of them either got this operation or they got sent off before there could be an investigation. And I just want everybody to know that this has been happening since 1492. And that's my poem. They cut off my tongue when I couldn't speak their language. Teotol may not hear me, mouth full of blood. May the cholo squintly find me, take me to my final rest. Grabbed me by the pussy, pulled out my matriz, hiding evidence of their transgressions. Now they're free to rape me. Sentenced to la operacion. One in three Taino women. They threatened to take my welfare. My body was not my own. 1907 public policy. Sterilize the unwilling. Eugenics before the Nazis. Profile means killing. I mean, pro-life means killing. Save me from this suffering. My prison is my home. Until a man can claim me in this land of the free, where once I could be a leader, a voice for my people. They beat fear into our psyche. Now I'm seen as inferior. They can pluck me off the res, blind eyes from authority. I hope they don't find my body, spare my mother knowing. Outsiders to whom my community took without consent. 
they declared an accident must have fallen into the flames, swept under a rug woven by my aunties. They take my children as I cross. Asylum is no crime. Sorry, my internet was working, it wasn't right, okay. They take my children as I cross. Asylum is no crime. Raised to hate their mom, my child will not know. All my sacrifice and love, the other side of hope. They didn't bring me God, they brought hell on our shores. Thank you, that was my first one. Wow, wow. <laughs> and Denise, intense. And then um, I have another one. This one's called uh, the red, white, and blue. The land of the free comes at a cost that only the poor pay. Sent off to fight a war against an axis of evil waged on innocent people who didn't get to vote for their dictator. We plant bombs at their feet. The Middle East is America's garden. America, America, where corporations gain billions as millions become homeless. Thousands lose their lives. 2,000 turns to 1,400 turns to bombing Syria and placing more families in cages. Always the lesser of two evils. Diet evil is still evil. Cops are, doing gang, are still doing gang shit, murdering and walking free, protect and serve their own interests and masters, while we fight amongst ourselves about who deserves that thin slice of artificially flavored American pie. They send the poor to fight their wars, the system of a downward spiral, raising generations of unstable men who only know how to throw fits and bullets. They traumatize the population with their guns. Homegrown terrorism is seen as patriotism. Separating families in more places than at the border, a prison system that relies on the failing education system to birth more slaves. How many grew up with a parent behind the glass? A legacy of incarcerating dreams. Dreamers are not the only ones chasing that American dream. Everyone working nine to five to survive. Wake up shit, eat work shit, eat sleep and repeat. Working for the weekends, the new game, the trip to Cancun, to flee the freeze that just froze most of your constituents in the Lone Star State. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. We don't matter till it's election time, I guess. It's cool to flee to Mexico when America suffers a crisis. Just don't let those immigrants claim asylum. We don't care if they're fleeing from a crisis. They are illegals and the continuation of family separation is great for the bottom line of the immig immigration industry. I'm sorry, did you think immigration is meant to deter drugs and organized crime? I guess, but you'd have to excuse the billions raked in every year by the private detention centers, making money, money off the forgotten youth. Home of the brave essential workers that don't deserve $15 an hour or PPE. How much are you worth to your country? Ask not what you can do for your country. Ask how much your country does for you as it idly sits by and watches its citizens die in a pandemic, in a war, in the streets, at church, during a sermon, during a trip to get groceries, having to use your body to protect your baby from live fire. They still won't make stricter gun laws because people who have never lived in fear of being shot down for being in the wrong part of town don't believe there is a gun problem that only happens outside of their gated community. I'm the problem, in fact an educated brown woman who lives on the wrong side of the tracks. I'll keep spreading the gospel of these United States, dealing knowledge like drugs. This isn't the America sung about in songs or praised about in books. It's the America that makes poets rant on incessantly about all its problems while leaving out any solutions. Thank you guys.
I have. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yes. Oh, oh. Wow. Say it, sister. Say it. Good Thank job. You. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, girl. <laughs> Someone has to say it. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> So I just have this one more and it's one of my favorites. It's called La Llorona. And just so y'all know, the Llorona story we know is not the real one. Um, but I could talk about that later. Okay, so here's La Llorona. Mis hijos, mis hijos, ripped from my bosom as we reached el otro lado, caged like animals by their primos from the other side. Compadre, how can you wear that uniform? Token brown officers, do you not have a heart? They took mis bebés, leaving my breast aching and full of milk. Tio Tomas, que dirá tu mamá? Ella who crossed all those years ago, sprayed with DDT to cleanse her of her filth. Cancer took her from you. Are you not part of the ones who gave it to her? Mis hijas, mis hijas, they have given them to strangers no paperwork to trace them, trafficked along state lines, a worse fate than death. Mis hijas y mis hijos, thousands of forgotten souls with no one to love them, cast like pearls to swine. I cried for you. Mis hijos, mis hijas, I wish I could die for you, that my llantos and sacrifice could only save you. No matter what they say, you did not deserve this. Son niños inocentes, mis críos. No matter what they say, this is not their land. You are native to the soil. Children of Anahuac, si Latonatzin, Latonatzin gave birth to you before they came and ripped all her children from her bosom. All she could cry, all she could do was cry. Donde están mis hijos? Donde están mis hijas? Thank you. Right on, Denise. <laughs> Thank you. Denise, was that Nahuatl that you were speaking? Yes, that was Nahuatl. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Denise, I support everything that you do. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> so much. We love you in this house, Richie. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> awesome um so i know for a fact like there's a lot of people that are, are seeing you perform for the first time and read your work how can they continue to to see what you put out there and again i mentioned that you do have a, a manuscript that's gonna get published and an upcoming performance i'll let you speak about these things thank you um so i have this little paper so while I put that up for you guys to see, um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, but both Instagram and Facebook are the same. So you could follow one or the other. Um, I have a book coming out. It's my first book and it's all thanks to you, Richie. The first time I ever read poetry out loud and for the public was here at the, at, at the barbed wire um, through Zoom. So I just want to thank you for that. That opened a whole bunch of doors for me. It's coming out in July. If you guys follow me, I will be posting up information on how to get it. And I also have a poetry reading this April 30th for um, the Hector Padilla Literary Contest. Um, and it's I'm going to be joined by Yasmin Ramirez and a lot of uh, all of the other ones that, that won. I didn't win, but I'm going to be there as a guest. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's pretty dope like you weren't even in the like you didn't win but you're like you know what we still need you to read you're like highlighted you're like the yeah feature. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time it's the first time and i'm very excited <laughs> me too I'm, I'm i'm there but uh yeah looking very much forward to all that um thank you denise thank you cool and uh you heard it mentioned uh hector padilla is you know he he passed away last year unfortunately he a uh, long time english teacher uh, writer and and it, for me personally, he he meant a lot to me because he he was a friend and mentor when I first started teaching at EPCC. Uh, he's the one who hired me, you know. And and when I first started in the college, he you know he was helpful. You know, he felt like an ally because you know starting super young teaching, like at 23, 24, it it felt kind of hard to to feel respect, I guess. But you know, he 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 was just there. To answer any question he let me hang out in his office um you know so losing him was was really tough um so i'm glad that 
you know, this contest is there. Um, and I'm glad that we're able to remember him in this way. Uh, so just wanted to mention that. Check that out. It's a reading next, next, uh, uh, the 30th, Friday. So, um, and I'll share that on our social media, uh, Barb Wire Open Mic Series, if you're, if you're not sure. And of course, Tumble Words. If you're not already, I don't know if we've mentioned it, Facebook. I'm sure most of you guys have us in one form or another because you're here, right? But if you're not already, Tumble Words on Facebook, where you can get connected with all the upcoming events and workshops into the future. And of course, Barb Wire Open Mic Series, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And, you know, uh, I'll try, I, I'm trying to post all sorts of events and not just our stuff but community events because we're all stronger together in that way um you know and like i said our community has grown our next performer runs her own events and uh i, th I think she's just amazing she's awesome I, I really love her writing her poem and just her um fincabulary presents she's got a one coming up this thursday uh thursday night online open mics doing podcasts we have finn bell in the house joining us from san francisco west coast hell yeah uh so it's always great she can be here finn hey bell there. how are you today i'm doing pretty well it's been a busy but very satisfying day starting with um um, a workshop this morning in the Bronx, well, online, but in the Bronx, and then um, Tumble Words with, uh, with Donna and, um, um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm blanking out. But anyway, <laughs> um, I have a few things that I want to share with everyone. They might have a unifying theme. You guys tell me. So I'm going to start with a shorter one first. It's called Take Me Home. You carefully map out the borders you plan to draw upon my body. You mark the barrier I should not cross. Heavy white lines upon the brown of my chest. My nipples arouse you as you pass your hand between my breast, as you cleave me with your paint from neck to mons pubis, creating perfect halves of east and west. You waver a moment, your eyes contemplate a foundation as your desire engineers its bearing, brick by brick, arches rising and falling. An elegant deck spans the distance and connects my dark arela. Your imagination holding our shared bridge aloft, a breath's intake, before you look away and let it topple, repulsed and ashamed. Ah, uh, that's a long one. This next one is called Adobo, Pancit, and Lumpia are not my name. The first words out of your mouth when I say I am Filipino may pretty much connect, may pretty much cement our whole relationship right there. I don't want to bounce the judgment back. I don't want to make assumptions that bring up words as adjectives like Sending you in my mind's eye and superimposing vanilla. But see, you asked if I was from Mexico. No, I am not from Mexico. Though there is absolutely nothing wrong with being from Mexico, except the itch behind my twitching eye that feels it's the first country you pull up readily to trip your tongue as your white picket fences bypass other countries, other cultures, spanning central to south. When you learn my parents were originally from the Philippines, I began to count down until the enumeration that is inevitable, where you begin to ask if I like to eat pancit, adobo, and lumpia. And do I know how to cook all these dishes? Proud that you know such quote unquote exotic words and cuisine when you tick off my ancestral words with its swayingly phonetic dancing syllables and fork it with your canine tooth and flop it around on your fat, undisciplined tongue now gasping, dying salmon pouring out upon the shores of your mouth. <sighs> Further reflections on not being Pinay enough, Pinay being the slang for Filipino. Look at me, I will never pass for a perfect bride or a perfect daughter, can it be? I'm not meant to play this part. Now I see that if I were truly to be myself, I would break my family's heart. 
I say, look at me, but I don't truly want you to see. I want you to superimpose a pert nose, a figure, bayabas or some pollock tree slender and tall, not this stout ground hugging trunk I was given. Though the salted water of the ocean, karagatan, na tumitira sa tuktuk ng ulo ko, blue easterly wind, benediction in my direction, naming me native daughter, our collective colonial mentality, could not spy me past the translucence find and sad, found inside mestisang bangos, that also ordained my crowning glory should be the exact replica of a regal baby's buhok palmolive. My tío punctuated my tropical fever initiation into a newborn life, brown nestled among brown with the oddest premonition, seeing the sweat beads gather on my nose and making the prediction that I would marry early. But this still did not make me the store-bought picture of domesticity. I failed at that too. Too many pots stirred while singing top 40s, the stifling heat of a stove topped my captive audience. This still did not make me a meek and obedient daughter. I couldn't comply, Daddy. I couldn't fashion this disaster into a child who you could show off to relatives and acquaintances. The world was seducing me and waiting outside our door, and the prepackaging of this provincial life boxed me in, cellophane wrapping tight. Wrong tale, naturally. I cannot be that Disney princess either. I am not meant to play this part. Who is that girl I see? I am careful concentration as I drink in her every feature. Why does her face take shape inside my mind but step just outside of reach when I try to meet her? Does anyone know this impudent woman and why she finds it so amusing to be staring straight back at me? She is me. She is not you are lying. Why is my reflection someone I don't know? Upon my pale arms are lovely scars of my own creation. Barot saya, merely a blur of the racier edges ng katawan ko. Somehow I cannot hide who I am, though I've tried. When will my reflection show who I am inside? And I want to end with this one. This is called Cry slash Dallas. My trip was set for failure even before I set foot for the first time in Dallas. And it's hot, dry, flat terrain. The end already presented itself. I simply failed to see it. Each time you canceled coming out to the Bay Area, I took it as nerves. I believed your story that you had a fear of flying. I kept clinging to a romantic notion even after I saw the reality. The reality was older by about 20 years, but who was counting? The reality had a hereditary heart condition. I feigned somewhere that I felt the correct compassion. The reality still protested and claimed that he was supporting his parents. But beneath that noble red-blooded Americana male, caring and capable was a grown ass man still living with mom. I was happy then, or at least I told myself, light and still floating above weightier concerns, poetry was still this pretty thing with only pretty words littering it and back then so was I. And somehow that was enough, this placid surface perfection, because it helped me to mask how unworthy I felt, how the image in the mirror only appeased me until I stepped out into the open air and met the stairs I know courted me with apprehension, feeling I was a degree more flawed with each eye widening in my direction, actually craving inviting the cat calls because it didn't matter if each part of my visible and invisible body was picked apart and over-sexualized as long as what came before it was the word that approximated beautiful. And later, much later, my ego was so overwhelmed beneath any praise tossed my way, even as simultaneously my self-image was further eroded and here faceless youths were vigilant waiting for this opening, assured in their knowledge that they could become bolder, that their abuse could wrap itself deftly in rehearsed comments and push oily eager past my boundaries, impress their insistent hands over my body, bruise me in the name of so-called pleasure. I didn't know yet how to form no, 
within every pore. I dampened my shame by saying to myself over and over that I was willing to give you permission to base my body. However, whenever you wished, I added it's okay to that mantra when you shoved yourself inside me and took your pleasure. Rough and repeated. I said it was okay that I never enjoyed myself. I said it was okay that with my every cry, I handed you over my power over my body, my decision, myself. You lulled my fears. I capitulated. Though your excuses were lame, you came sloppy and sheathed. You came reckless and sheathed. And still and still, I let your cock lay inside me. Spill its seed because I needed so desperately to mistake in its warmth coming and going as love. I did make the trip to Dallas as planned, looking past your daily protests and believing that fool, that liar, that love conquers all. I booked a seedy motel room for the week, already foreseeing a future where I would wander the city, a woman alone, easy prey, because I made sure I was just so. I prowled the mini bar in the only clockwork pattern of this ruse, making fast friends with Jack. Jose and past that, whichever cheap plastic 50 milliliter seemed most friendly. I paced my quarters, crazed, caged, and sang a song along that I only half knew while Faith Hill duetted on the TV set before me. I left my motel, motel room unlocked and lounged inebriated around the pool until I crisped. Already having prophesied a future where I would be robbed of all the cash I had brought, where I was innocent and trusting enough to believe and serve and protect, naive enough to believe it when an internet search locked at my expense that the neighboring town of Irving, Texas was progressive and diverse. And I called the local police to report the crime. I didn't know, but in my sadness because of stupid romantic heartache, I had forgotten for a moment that I was a woman alone. I had forgotten I was a woman in a strange new place. I had forgotten I was a woman whose skin color was brown and not white. I sobered up, but did not buckle down and stand my ground quickly enough when the officers little by little questioned my purpose for being there, questioned my intentions, questioned my mental well-being, questioned my character and morality. They did not need evidence. I was brown, I was lying. They did not need proof. I was brown, I was out to exact some convoluted revenge. They did not need me to show clarity. I was brown. I was already condemned. They didn't need me to voice that I was already, that I wasn't selling my body. I was brown. I was dirt. I was worthless. They did this, but I did this too. In repetition of other male voices telling me what my body was and wasn't for. They were just repeating the refrain. I was providing the backup vocals. But where my body was still faltering, my skin color was already filling in the gaps and taking form. My self-worth came perhaps this much too late, but it germinated that day. And my body, me, woman, all of me, identity rooted farther beneath the ground than the ideology of myself. My gender as a weaker sex, my ethnic awareness that there is no inferior or superior. What I wouldn't do to go back to that day and the days before that and stand tall. I cannot take back what had happened. I cannot fix what I helped to break along the way. Today, I roar, and that is going to count for something past in dignity. Today and every day forward, I roar, and it's going to become everything. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Mujer. Oh, my Keep God. roaring. Yeah. Keep growing. Beautiful. So an epic, an epic piece. Yes, absolutely. You gotta check out all the love in the chat. <laughs> um <laughs> definitely gripping. Um so I know again a lot of people are seeing you for the first time. How can they like keep in tune with what you have going on? Because you're you're so amazing. Um if you have super Instagram. <laughs> you um i am finn underscore bell p-h-y double n-e underscore b-e-double-l-e and i also have a link tree that has all my everything um i don't remember what it is but i could put it in the chats thank you and awesome. i have a book <laughs> <laughs> i look forward to get the yeah i'm gonna follow back follow up on on that uh and and also yeah uh once you get that link tree you gotta check out the spotify there's some really great stuff in there 
Um, that's all I can say. You gotta go check it out. Gotta go check it out. Um, this is so as far as this night goes. I feel like we just hit a rhythm and and didn't stop, you know, at some point. And and this is a collection now. I'm amazed with all the work that has been read. What you what everyone is doing. This is why we do it through each other, celebrate each other, the words, the ideas, and the meanings behind them. Uh, there's a little bit of delay on my webcam. A little bit. It's fine. Um, but as far as signing up goes, we did have a couple people who did not make it, um, unfortunately. And that happens. It's it's fine. Uh, we do have some people here also that haven't signed up. Uh, I was going to ask Khan if she wanted to read, but she I know she had to leave. Um, Khan, I want to show some love to Khan as well. Uh, I know she had to leave, but maybe she's watching on YouTube. She's been super, like, all really helpful for some of these Monday night open mics and, and that she, when she helps me by taking over and hosting, that really is a, a lot of work. And if you don't know Khan, Poet Khan, be on the lookout. She's got some some great work. She's also getting some work published soon as well. Uh, but I want to open this up to any of the if, if, if anyone here is in the chat that wants to read something or share something now is the time i'll just open it up uh i don't know if i should just like start calling people if they're interested uh let's see maybe dj grant dj dj freshen yeah david is is a really cool guy he's also a, a writer poet teacher uh we did a live stream earlier uh which was cool. It was interesting. He did a DMX tribute uh, DJ set, played some songs. But uh, I don't know, David, Gregory, I don't know if, if you guys have anything you'd like to share before we close out the night. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, man, uh, I, I, I could share something. Let me just pull over real quick. Um, oh, you're driving. <laughs> yeah, I got on the road, but... Um, yeah, sure, man. Uh, let, let me just pull it up. I don't know if uh, if the other gentleman wants to uh, wants to read something first. Mm, yeah, let me let me see. Um, I know he's tuning in, but Gregory Speed, Grown Man Speed. I don't know. Did you want to share something? Not sure. You can you can also just it. It's all good. You don't have to either. Okay, I put it out there. Um, so yeah, David, uh, has attended BWAMS before in the past. If, if you're not familiar with history of BWAMS, we're, we've been around since 2007, not as, not as long as, as tumble words, but you know, it, it's good to have been around, uh, for so long and, and kind of provide a community space for writers and performers of all, all types and including this online. So, you know, David, I think David's been around because the project director before me was uh, Roberto Santos. Uh, he's also a professor, performer, awesome dude. One of my one of my best friends, friends and mentors as well. Uh, he did a great job with BWAMS. You know, it was it was an event. Like we would have it the last Saturday of every month, and you could always just count on the venue being packed with people. And uh, so I eventually took over and uh it was not as packed no but also we also ended up ended doing like 10 to 15 open mics a month so that's also a reason because we were able to spread out and give people more stages especially you know maybe people who couldn't make it in in some instances in some part of town uh the important thing for me was also establishing establishing spaces that were not just in bars so for for the youth to participate as well or for anyone and I do really like the concept of online mics now where it's, you know, not everyone is mobile, you know? So this kind of makes it easy for people to just log in and, and do their thing. So we're still in the business of creating spaces and stages for people. And that's really it. Uh, let me see. Let me check in on, on David. He was pulling over. Damn, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to, like, stop you while you were driving. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. That's cool. I've... I've been listening. I know I, I kind of tuned out a little bit, but um, I was I was trying to take care of some stuff. And um, yeah, man, it's it, it's been it's been a very uh, productive weekend, week, month, whole year, really. Um, you know, it's so cool to see uh, BWAMS uh, evolve the way it has. You know, I'm I'm really excited. Like you said, I you know I was there back in the day, back when we used to go to the Percolator and 
and and and you know, I remember you playing the sax, man, singing some, po- you know, reading some poems and stuff, and it's it's really awesome, man, to 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 see um, that it's it's taken on a, a virtual platform, and and uh, that really opens up a lot of uh, of doors, you know. You, you see people from a lot of different places, and um, it's 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 very exciting, man. It's very exciting, and I've I've kind of been, you know, kind of like very low key for like the past five years, you know, just kind of working on my craft and, and, and just chilling. But, but I've, I've definitely been wanting to, to uh, touch, touch base with everybody again. So it's, it's really awesome man, to, to, uh, to be with you all here today and, and with the community. Cool, man. Appreciate, appreciate that. Those words. Thank you. Absolutely, man. So I have a little short poem here. Um, I, I I got published in um, uh, it's it's an upstart uh, journal and it's it's a very uh, very brief poem and uh, it's about a donut. So uh, this one's called the uh, Ode to My Morning Donut. Ode to My Morning Donut. I pick you up and you remind me of a gold ring, but like a tire stripped of its wheel to where the air hollows your curving body as it sweeps mine. I crumble you with my fingers, your soft cake dissolving on my tongue. And when you break open, falling to my collar, I brush off your dark pieces. With every bite, I consume you, leaving only my sticky hands. I empty a cup of coffee over you. On my way to work, I dial in the morning show for kicks before driving into a day full of mouths, emptied over internet service telemarketing calls until the end of shift and over the lunch line, I give you my waistline, my full attention. I give you my hunger, my mouth, my calloused hands made of milk. Hell yeah, man. Awesome. You probably can't see, but we're snapping and clapping for you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sweet, man. So uh, we'll work. We'll work more with each other mo- moving forward. I'd love to get you involved in some some BWAMS events. Awesome, and, brother. Uh, nice, nice. Now be careful driving. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get back to finishing up the event. It's been amazing. Uh, as I've mentioned before, this is on YouTube, so we can go back and relive performances. Lots of powerful, powerful pieces uh, with meaning. You know. With content and I, I love to see that uh, so tumble words follow you know if you're not already doing that I'm sure most of you are right go hit up those workshops uh, I need to be better about that because I need to write a lot more but and support all those people who shared those links their books their works go go hit them up uh, you know if you got some extra cash maybe you did your taxes get something in return you know buy you no know, that's a good opportunity to buy get back to people and if if you know money is an issue i always say this uh you know sharing stuff online goes a long way just just sharing people's content because if anything a few people who hadn't wouldn't have seen it or come across it might and that could be the biggest difference in the world for some people so i really appreciate you guys thanks for for tuning in to the live stream uh i want to i mean shout i didn't i haven't even given a chance to shout out people who've been in the in the youtube live stream like Andres is always here to support. Oh man, I love I love it. You know, Amanda, Amanda Wilson. Like, we miss your performance. Amanda needs to come and read her poetry. You know, we miss that. But it's cool to see you in the chat. Um, who else? I mean, of course, we got all, some peeps in both in both calls. So yeah, if you guys are tuning in, just thanks for for that. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to unmute and say bye, we're gonna go ahead and, and end the live stream. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna go to to. Uh, yeah, you guys can unmute and just make some noise as we say bye to Yay. the live stream. Richie, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well. I'll see you there. Good night. Good night. Uh, guys great you meeting days. everybody. I know. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Amazing people, and I was honored to meet you all. Thank you. Honored to meet you, Maria.